Well, very good morning from San Luis Obispo. My name is Steve Hammond, and this is Jack the Stats Bauer. And we're here to cover the North American Elite Series, the first in the five races that we have uh, for this series event. Uh, we have the men's field here, absolutely stacked, Jack, um, with a, quite a fast course, 6.4 miles, and there's only about 500 feet of elevation gain. So we know for the first 5K that this course is absolutely lightning fast, and it gets into a good obstacle gauntlet for the last half. The men's field is stacked. However, who's going to suit this course, Jack? To say it's stacked is an understatement. There are 13 previous podium finishers on a national series who are here. That means that someone who has finished top three at one of these major races is going to finish in 13th or worse. Unreal. We saw what VJ Jones did all last year. Three wins, reigning National Series champion. He just set the record for the fastest super ever a couple weeks ago. This is yeah, a super course. Yeah, that was sub 40 minutes, wasn't it? Exactly. Very quick and, times. I mean, he's the man to beat. Until yeah. he gets beaten, I don't see any way that he's losing. Ryan Atkins just biked across Alaska a couple weeks ago. But we've seen what he's done with recovery through the years. Current Doesn't world matter, champ. he's missed her second place. I can see him getting second place again. Third place, that's where the battle is going to be. Yep. My pick, honestly, is Ryan Kent. He's super functionally fit, hasn't run a Spartan in a few years, but at this moment right now, I think that he's going to shock a lot of people and get third place. He has six podiums at National Series of races in the past, and, you know, this could be number seven. And don't forget about the young guys. We've got uh, Rylan Shadeg and um, uh, Hobie Corson, yeah. Hawk Cole, who's, uh who did a show in in uh, Utah. So yep. uh, we've got very, very stacked field here. Yep. So... Um, we, we, we know anything can happen, especially on the latter part. You know, the gauntlet of um, Olympus and uh, spear throw, yep. that could change things up a little bit. Now, what about penalty loops and stuff? What, what's happening there? If you miss the spear throw, that is burpees? That is burpees. Okay. Penalty loop on Olympus and uh, the box and a few yep. other ones. But I can't really see much failures going on. It's actually quite dry here. Yep. Um, there's no, no rolling mud, no oh, yeah. water. So it is a very, very fast course. Um, it could be a very exciting finish. Definitely. This start right here, gradual downhill. I think you're going to see runners like Mark Battris, Chris Brown, Mark Gaudet, some of the speedier guys right away, just going easily sub five minute miles for the first mile or so. And don't forget, Hunter McIntyre is making his return. We haven't seen him on the course in five years. Whenever he shows up, he's always a contender. The Hunter is here. That's really, really exciting. The ball pony is back. Fantastic. Well, as we know, super deep field. Anything can happen. I actually think Jack, it's wide open. Good luck keeping up. This is going to be a fast day. <laughs> Well, thank you, Steve, and welcome to the Team Jack. It's good to have you. Of course, I'm David McGee. I will not be here on site because I am attending the birth of my child, my first child, but I couldn't miss this race. Look at this field that's so stacked. Out in the front, you can see Logan Broadbent, VJ Jones, Kirk DeWitt back in action, as well as Ryan Atkins up in the front. We know that VJ likes these flat and fast courses. He did such damage in Jacksonville to open the season last year with all that speed. And then, of course, he dominated in Asheville as well on one of those speedier courses. So that means you've got to look for guys like Mark Battris, Chris Brown, some of those folks who contended at those flatter, quicker, high-tempo courses. This is an opportunity for those guys to really take it to some of the other athletes. For VJ. He really made it known last year that it's not just these flat courses that I'm good at. When he went out and won the championship in Big Bear, he proved that he was more than just a speed guy. He can really do it all. Today, he proves, he's going to see if he can prove that he is still the guy on these flatter courses. As you can see, this race is spreading out with the speed really quickly. And so as we funnel in here, a little bit of mud, it's mostly going to be drier out on this course. The obstacles will be mostly dry. Atkins has moved his way up to the front. He just finished a thousand mile race on a fat tire bike. The Iditarod in Alaska actually tied for the win. Somehow he is back out here already completely changing gears, running fast as they hit the overwalls. And the depth of this men's field needs to be acknowledged because there's so much speed and that looks like it's Hawk Call up in the front. Don't just call him the son of Hobie Call. This guy has made a name for himself with a podium in Utah in his opening race of the series last year. And just behind him, that's Mark Battress. We know what he can do on a marathon course. We've seen what he did in Asheville running so strong there as well last year. He likes the speed. 
Atkins right next to VJ Jones. And this might be a move from Mark Gaudet. Oh my God, And there you heard it. He likes the speed as well. The Army Ranger can really turn it over. He's your ultra world champion. Went out to tell you ride and dominated, breaking the Spartan ultra record. This is a great course for him to be able to use his tempo speed, his threshold speed. So up in the front, that's Mark Gaudet, Mark Battress, Hawk Call, but stalking. You have Nick Matz, Ryan Atkins, VJ Jones. This is a nice, solid pack. And we're gonna see a lot of shuffling throughout this race as the athletes hit their first hairpin turn. These little changes, these little turns, they actually take a bit out of you because you have to slow down and re-accelerate out of them. So they break your rhythm and they take a little bit more energy than just being able to hold a tempo. Some of these athletes are rhythm runners. They need that rhythm and this is a rhythm breaker. Now who we haven't spotted yet are the two hybrid athletes in the field, Hunter McIntyre and Ryan Kent making their returns as well. As the blonde hair here, this is Nick Matz running in a pair of VJ shoes. Mark Gaudet right behind him. And that looks like Chris Brown. Ryan Atkins comfortably sitting back. The question is, will he have the speed in the legs today? As now you can see Tyler Veerman also joining the action and that's Kirk DeWitt in the black, taking up the rear of that lead pack. And there's the bulk pony, Hunter McIntyre, making his appearance. The speed these guys are running with, we're looking at five flat pace right now. They are rolling through these fields. So it does have that cross country course feel, doesn't it? Some of these athletes love to chew up terrain like this. Other ones are more into the grind, but the most versatile athletes out in this field are able to do it all. The Ryan Atkins, the VJ Jones, it doesn't matter what course you throw at them, they are gonna be a contender regardless. As we get another shot of McIntyre, this is high end speed for him. He's been focused more on a bit more of that tempo effort that he runs in his hybrid races. This is a very high speed. As you can see, Nick Matz up at the front. This is an Eastern Oregon runner. He was actually a conference champion in college. So he has tremendous track speed. Look for him to take advantage of it today as he's pushing VJ Jones a little bit out of his comfort zone. VJ Jones, so disciplined though, won't fall into the trap. He runs his race. Another one of those little rhythm breakers. Just enough to spike your heart rate, slow you down a little hawk call. Always with some flair in the shorts. If you remember, he had that pirate on his booty in Utah. Everybody saw that thing waving in the wind like a flag and now he's got those cool neon vibes going here. He has the ability to climb, he has the ability to run fast. Just like his father. We're starting to see a little bit of gap forming, but as soon as we hit a good solid stretch of obstacles, expect that to close. Expect there to be a ton of shuffling over the top 10 to 15 racers throughout this event. And that's Hunter McIntyre running steps in front of Logan Broadbent. Broadbent finished fourth in this series last year. The world champion boomerang thrower and American Ninja Warrior contender in the jorts right there, the short jorts. And now Nick Matz, VJ Jones getting onto the monkey bars and you can see 
The experience of VJ Jones, just so smooth in and out of that obstacle, moving into first position. So we have on the first obstacle, first main one, monkey bars, VJ Jones, Mark Buttress, Paul Cole and Ryan Atkins. Here we go, lightning fast course. Kirk DeWitt with Tyler Veerman right now. Another two former collegiate track athletes working together and then Josiah Middow chasing right behind. Josiah, of course, put on such a strong showing in Big Bear, duking it out with Lars Arneson and Atkins in the opening miles of that race before VJ Jones stalked them and took them all down at the end. Just such depth in this race right now as Mark Battress looks to be pushing up towards the front again. Glenn Race chasing right behind Logan Broadbent into that barbed wire crawl. A lot of action, a lot of shuffling going on as Josiah has already cleared it. He's more of one of those gritty racers. He likes those, that tougher terrain, his background in Xterra means he's got the capability to really roll when the terrain and the footing isn't perfect, when the climbing is tougher, he's got great speed. This is a tough test for him today. As you can see, Mark Gaudet pushing hard behind Hawk Call. Mark Gaudet, one of those athletes with 15 minute low speed for his 5K, but also can turn it over on ultras. He's had podium finishes at the icy eight hour. Multiple top 10 finishes at the JFK 50 miler. And there's a spot, a shot of Ryland Shadeg making his way onto the scene. We saw how strong he was climbing in Utah, but this is again a different test of his athleticism. As Chris Brown and Ryan Atkins pushing together through this field, you can see the terrain is gonna get a little choppier with the footing just because we're not on those dirt roads anymore but still fairly smooth. You can see how open that stride is for Hawk Call. And VJ Jones pushing up near the front still. Nick Matt's right behind him. Mark Batras, Hawk Call. And Mark Gaudet. Pipe Layer's got a load of athletes in it. Ryland Shadeg coming out. As is Ryan Atkins. But again, always lurking at the front is VJ Jones, not letting anybody push him to run a race other than his own. As you can see again, that track speed of Nick Matz coming out. And a strong move from Kirk DeWitt. We knew that his fitness was gonna be at a higher level this year, and he is running as strong as almost anyone in the field. Anytime you hit this gravel, you are getting such fantastic return off of your foot to ground power. Every step, you're just propelling yourself forward. It's so fast. Athletes are taking advantage of this. You'll see them dip below that five minute pace. Anytime you hit those stretches that feel like road. And again, if you're betting, you have to assume VJ Jones is in a fantastic place as we take another one of those 180s and you see it take a little bit out of those legs. It's an opportunity for VJ to really assert himself on the obstacles and he's gonna need to because even though he's got other experienced racers with him, 
he is going to be the quickest of these leaders through those obstacles, making up a few seconds here and there. UJ. This has been a competitive battle so far as VJ Jones is working to try and get into the lead in this race. The athletes have hit Olympus and it looks like VJ has now moved into first position. But each obstacle we're having three, four, five, six athletes on at the same time. It's so difficult to be caught in a battle like this. It's exciting, it's fun but you are never able to relax in a race like this because you can't get your rhythm because you are constantly battling to hold somebody off or move up past someone. Still only a second or two separating the top four athletes in this race. But each obstacle, VJ Jones adding just a few seconds to his lead. The pace has been blistering. We're coming into more obstacles now with VJ the specialist heading to the spear. Hawk call in second. Mark Bratchers, Nick Mask, VJ Sticks is Spear. Stick. So the first four all stick their spear. I'm here with Nick Mask. And it's lightning. Ryan Atkins trying to shake off some of the rust of being on that bike for so long out in that cold Alaska weather. No problem on the spear, but he's got to turn it over now. He tends to be a second half racer, but he's running out of real estate. And doesn't that effortless stride of Hawk Call just look so familiar? Reminds you of somebody, maybe his father. Leaders are reaching the Atlas Stone right now. And again, this is a close competitive battle. VJ Jones still out in front, but Mark Battress and Hawk Call pushing him just seconds back. He has not been able to shake these two. And onto the multi-rig, these are the obstacles where you'll see him take just a couple seconds again. VJ's so good at his transitions. He's got that lean body sorcery he always talks about. Those transitions are so smooth in and out of his running. As Nick Matz making really strong swings there, but that transition back to the rings probably cost him another second or two. That's right, Nick. And these things add up because the athletes are working so hard just to catch back up on each running section only to lose that time again. So I'm here at the back here. We've got BJ Jones. And Mark Batchus right on his tail and Hawk Call. What a battle for third this is going to be. But really only 10, 20 seconds behind is Nick Mass. We know he can run and he potentially can catch up. BJ's just finished. He's up. 
for the hilliest part of the course now. Go get him, Mark. Go get him. You're doing great. You got this. Don't lose sight of him. Sometimes when you see these races and you look at Mark Batras, you can see that he either has it or he doesn't have it. But he has that look in his eye in this race that I've got the legs today, that he's running with that level of confidence. Often you see him go out hot and he starts to fade a little bit. Maybe he miscalculated, but he looks so smooth in this specific race. When he has that look of focus on his face, he's very tough to beat. And he showed us in Asheville that this is the perfect type of course for him to assert himself. But again, VJ Jones running just only a second or two ahead of Mark Batras, and it looks like Hawk Call still holding on to third position. But a gap forming there. The obstacles are starting to add up. Call's got his own battle to hold on to third right now. His speed is still good. He looks smooth. It's the only main hill on the course. Mark Batras has made a move. We've got Stairway to Spider up here and then it's pretty much downhill all the way. Mark has made a move on BJ Jones. And this is that version of Mark Batras I was talking about where he looks so confident when he's running at the front of the race. He has the endurance to hold these, these speeds for these long events. We saw what he's done in some of these 12 hour races. We've seen what he can do in marathon and with minimal hills left to get in his way. All he has to do is descend an obstacle well and he could win this race. Almost to the top of this big climb. And still Mark Batras out in front as he had stairway to Sparta, but he has to continue to be proficient through his obstacles. Your world's toughest mother champion, Mark Batras has proven he can do long course and short course. But BJ Jones right behind and whole call. 1.2 miles to the finish. It's gonna be insane. That's true, Steve, because Mark Batras knows he's got a demon chasing him. We saw that comeback that VJ Jones made in the last three quarters of a mile in Big Bear. We saw how he was able to chase down Ryan Atkins through the bucket carry, how he was so smooth through his final obstacles, the speed he held on that last descent. Mark Batras is gonna need to give us everything if he wants to hold this lead, as Nick Matz is pushing for third right now. Can Mark Batras hold off VJ Jones? Coming into the rope climb right here. It looks like it's about a second between him and VJ may actually make the pass here on this climb. He does. Hawk Call is not out of this race. He is still only about a rope climb behind. All that work that Mark Batras put on that hill, he lost on one descent and a rope climb, and now he's got a battle on his hands. Side by side, he's gonna try and make another push. This is gonna be about who's got the guts now. VJ Jones or Mark Batras. Mark is probably the superior runner, but VJ has been so proven time and time again that if you put him on a course like this, if you challenge him near the end of the race where he's got a bunch of obstacles, he's gonna steal time from you. And again, going with that Tarzan swing, in and out of Twister so fast, a strong performance from that one out of Batras as well, and that's gonna put time between them and Hawk Call as well. 
I'm good, I think. Here's Nick Matz. You can hear the finish area up in the distance. Plate drag could be a big one here. Look how quickly VJ Jones got through that. And there's a bit of undulation in there. Again, it's rhythm breaking, but it could also just catch the sled, catch the rope. It looks like Batra's having a little bit of issue with that right there. VJ's out and Mark Battress is still battling with his sled. And now VJ Jones can see it, he can taste it. This is the win. Battress is gonna have to battle now. He's got a few seconds lead over Hawk Call and Hawk almost done with his sled as Nick Matz gets there. This battle's not over yet because we have that sandbag carry. VJ's proven to us that he's so good at some of these carries. First place, BJ Jones on the sandbag. I don't think it's enough to catch up, but Mark is still in second place. Hawk call right behind. One, two, and three. Point two of a mile to go with four or five obstacles. Four men ran podium races. Only three are gonna finish on the podium. Who's gonna take it? VJ looks like he's able to take a breath right here. He's slowing down just a little bit, not necessarily out of fatigue, but to rally for one finish and push. He's in a comfortable position with a nice lead. And now he's gonna surge home to that finish. Nick Matz is gonna need to make a push here. Sitting in fourth behind Hawk Call. And VJ's gonna go right up over this table and into that vertical cargo net. Batris is chasing, he's got second position, firmly held. Up and over the slip wall, this is Mr. VJ Jones. And now he can relax because he's got two obstacles left. Get through this hoist. VJ with those long pulls, leveraging that foot, big lean away. We're about one obstacle between each of these athletes. And VJ Jones looks like he's got this thing just about wrapped up. Batris has to push still. Mr. VJ Jones descending over the top. Let's see if he throws a party. Our call just a few pulls behind, but will his slight frame cost him here? It's gonna be a bit tougher. You can see his struggle just to move that thing a little. As VJ Jones has come back right where he left off with another win here. Let's go! In the North American Elite Series, race number one in San Luis Obispo. And Mark Batris is saying, I'm here to stay as well. Check me out. Second place today is gonna go to Mark Batris. It's a fantastic start to the season for him as Nick Matz has joined Hawk Call on the Herc hoist and Hawk is having some major issues here on the hoist. He's so much slighter of frame. And Nick Matz has got it to the top and we are seeing a pass here on the last failable obstacle of this race. No. Hawk Call, you can hear the desperation out of him. No. Can he close the gap? It's just a second or two between them. As Mark Batris has crossed in second, the battle for third is right here. Hawk call, Nick Metz. Who's gonna descend more recklessly? A huge jump from Nick Metz. And he's just run out of real estate, Hawk call has, as Nick Metz will take the third and final spot on the podium by just one second. Yeah.
That's a tough one for Hawk Call, and you can see your three podium finishers here. VJ Jones, Mark Battress, and Nick Matz. Rounding out the top ten, you can see Atkins in seventh, Mark Adet in eighth, and the two hybrid athletes returning to the scene, Ryan Kent and Hunter McIntyre, taking nine and ten. Not to be forgotten in the middle, Chris Brown, Ryland Shadeg. This was a deep field, and look at that cluster, how close your top racers were. Just about two minutes separating the entire top ten. Well, what a whirlwind that was. VJ Jones, today's at Victor. Wow, can you describe the first half of that course? Because everyone went out. There was probably 10 people in that pack at the front that could have won that. So the course layout today was a cross-country race for the first 5K, and then the second 5K was a brutal Spartan sprint. So uh, all the cross-country runners went right up to the front, and uh, I kind of found myself in that mix. I knew like I needed to stay in touch with those those real quick turnover guys, and uh, I was able to stay right there. And then once we started hitting obstacles, things really progressed, and you got to see uh, some real obstacle racing. So did you have a tactic coming into this race, or did you know it was going to be lightning fast at the start? Um, was there any panic when you were chasing these guys? Because you were up there, um, but you didn't let them go away. I tried to stay just relaxed. Um, I didn't expect to be as far up at the front as I was at the very start. Uh, but every time we hit an obstacle today, I would move almost in the first place, if not take the lead, with even things as small as the overwalls. That was kind of the plan, just do really well in the obstacles and stay smooth through the running, um, and then start making your moves once we hit some of those gauntlets. And it, it went pretty according to plan. And I was actually really impressed with my running today, but I was not the fastest one out there. I've never seen so many lead changes, VJ. There was probably about six or seven different lead changes um, out there. We had Nick Mass leading at one point, Chris Brown leading at one point, Mark Batchelor leading at one point. Now, Mark made a move on you towards the end uh, going up that hill. What was going through your mind? Describe that feeling of seeing Mark just moving up ahead. Did you have a plan in your head? So the exciting thing about obstacle racing is that you can sell out at a moment and then have a little time to recover and do it again versus in normal running you can blow up and that'll be the end of your race so heading into that climb i had worked pretty hard and i was on the verge of cracking so i had to like back it down and in that moment mark decided to sell out up that hill i knew we had a gauntlet coming up um, and i think he knew that as well so making that move was pretty much the only time that he could where it would count. So he, he went for it and I, I respect it, but I was able to make up that ground on a couple obstacles really quick. My obstacle game is just like really dialed right now. Well, you've had uh, so much experience under your belt now. You're still only, how old are you, 22 or something? 23 now. 23, 23 years old, but your maturity in the sport uh, is just growing and growing. And I Thank think you. I saw that today uh, with your obstacle game. Um, so congratulations, VJ. What an amazing victory that you had. Um, are you looking forward to Big Bear? Oh, I'm so excited. You know, we're venturing into those like mountain beast races this year. I feel like I have enough time to prepare and I'm, I'm really excited to test myself in that uh, little unfamiliar arena. I'm really excited for this season and this is a great start. Well, VJ Jones, today's men's champion for the North American Elite Series. What a guy, uh, what a race. Well done, mate. Thank See you, you in Big Bear. Thanks a lot, Steve. And VJ Jones, an athlete who clearly knows who he is as a racer, he raced with confidence, he knows exactly where he needs to make his moves and where he can make his time. And as we look forward to May in Big Bear for race two of the North American Elite Series, VJ Jones comes into that with a 300 points from first place here today. And of course, knowing that he is the defending champion on that Big Bear course. So don't forget to join us in May. We look forward to seeing you there in Big Bear.